When the Xperia 1 first popped out of Sony Mobile's metaphorical womb, the question on many people's lips was, will we ever see them squeeze out a compact version? And while rumours of a fresh new Sony Xperia compact smartphone do still persist, in the meantime we've got this little beauty here, the Xperia 5, which is basically a shrunken down version of that Xperia 1 flagship. And as with those old school compact smartphones, Sony has trimmed the specs a little bit as well as the asked price, though at 700 quid it's admittedly far from affordable for most folk. Of course, the original Xperia 1 was a flawed flagship phone. Great for media shenanigans, but not quite so great in some of the other departments. So basically the question is, as 2019 rolls to an end, is the Xperia 5 worth your time and money? Well, I've been using it as my full-time personal smartphone, and here's what I think for my in-depth three-month review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that there notifications bell. Cheers, everyone. And by now, it's pretty obvious that Sony has truly committed to this new 21x9 cinema-wide design, and it's never felt better than here on the Xperia 5. You get that same skinny finish in this dinkier form factor, similar to the Xperia 10, which released at the start of the year, and it makes for a very hand-pleasing grip, even with some fairly chunky bezels to contend with. At 6.1 inches, the Xperia 5 is one of the most compact smartphones of 2019, which is definitely something to be commended. As I mentioned before, same form factor as the Xperia 10, basically, except now you've got a glass construction, which does make it a little bit more slippy, a little bit more tricky to handle, but you've got the likes of the one-handed mode and everything on there, and that narrow grip means that it is very easy to use one-handed. Great news if you're trying to lug around some shopping or a small child or something like that. Thankfully the Sony Xperia 5 is a tough wee bugger as well. This thing's been on the road, done plenty of travelling and it's still in good nick, helped along by the Gorilla Glass 6 display. And the IP68 dust and water resistant helps to protect it from all the elements as well. And sure, compared with a lot of rivals, the Xperia 5 is admittedly somewhat lacking in the sex factor department. It doesn't have a gorgeous gradient glass finish or a seductive edge-to-edge -edge screen or anything like that, but as far as functionality goes, it's absolutely fine. That said though, I am still absolutely gutted that that gorgeous red model is not coming to blighty any time soon. Come on, sort it out, Sony. I mean, I know we're all a pack of miserable c**ts here in the UK, but we don't all just love black and grey. We're not all Aussie pissing Osborne. Colours aside, the only part of the Xperia 5's design that I don't really get on with is the power button slash fingerprint sensor arrangement. The fact that they're still separated out is a bit of a weird one, and that responsiveness is definitely a bit off. I found that I had to tap my finger to the scanner a couple of times more often than not in order to unlock this bugger. There's no dedicated face unlock feature here on the Xperia 5 either, unless you count that awful Google Android trusted lock thing, which I most certainly don't, uh, which means you basically end up entering your pin a fair few times each day when your fingerprint fails to read. Things definitely pick up, however, once you actually unlock the Xperia 5 and gaze adoringly upon that 6.1 inch Full HD Plus OLED screen. This bright and gorgeously vibrant panel dishes up some real eye candy, not to mention plenty of Sony smarts. From the Bravia X1 tech, which can sharpen up low quality visuals, to the creator mode feature, which reproduces a film's colours just the way the director intended. Of course, that creator mode is going to be of most interest to any button cinematographers and the like. The average consumer isn't going to give two monkeys about the precise filter used in post-processing. But the shopman tool definitely does help to improve the look of any low quality, low res video on the likes of YouTube, which is definitely a plus. And that 21x9 finish is also perfect for supported movies on the likes of Netflix, of which you'll find a fair bit. You basically get no letterboxing at all, giving you a proper full view experience. The only real issue is when watching older content, the likes of 3x4 aspect ratio, because then you get some severe border action both left and right. And a small selection of games also support that 21x9 stretched format as well, including Fortnite, giving you a fuller view of the battleground. I found that this setup is also perfect for multitasking, in particular watching a video up top while you're checking your emails, browsing the web, or doing whatever with the rest of the screen. It just works beautifully. It's definitely a great way of being productive while also dossing off at the same time. Great stuff. Who needs a Galaxy Fold, eh? That said, the virtual keyboard is quite cramped for smashing out emails on this narrow handset. I'm used to having a bit more room to work with these days, so I found that I miskeyed a lot of words and autocorrect had to come to my rescue more often than not. And the Xperia 5 definitely impresses on the audio front as well, with its effective stereo speaker setup and that LDAC Bluetooth support as well. Although sadly, like with most flagship phones these days, there's bugger all headphone jack. You'll have to bump down your budget and get the Xperia 10 if you want something like that. Zero complaints as far as the Bluetooth goes though. Paired up with the WH-1000s, I enjoyed a stutter-free music streaming experience, even in airports and packed out train stations and the like. Unfortunately, at the time of shooting, the Xperia 5 is still sat on the older Android Pi OS and indeed hiss. I'm really hoping it gets an update to Android 10 soon because I'm missing features like that dark mode and of course the excellent swipe navigation as well. As usual though, Sony has added a bunch of bonus features on top of Android 
and unfortunately, just like on the Xperia 1, the bulk of them don't really add much to the overall experience, sadly. Dynamic vibration is back in action, adding a customizable rumble effect whenever you're enjoying. It's definitely take it or leave it. And the side sense menu also feels superfluous, adding just another way to access apps and features like that one handed mode, which you can already activate with a quick gesture whenever you want. But enough grumbling, let's get back to the good news. And Sony definitely hasn't compromised on the performance for this dinkier Xperia 5. It still packs the excellent Snapdragon 855 chipset backed by 6 gigs of RAM. So, yeah, basically, I can't really remember a single stutter during my entire time with this handset. While games like PUBG play with a perfect frame rate, even on those highest graphical settings. And Sony's Game Enhancer adds all of the usual features as well, including a bit of notifications blocking and brightness locking, while also allowing you to record your gaming sessions so you can share your glory with the rest of the world. And while the Xperia 5 isn't quite among the very best Androids of 2019 as far as battery life is concerned, I definitely have no complaints whatsoever. I always made it to the end of a very, very busy day with a little bit of gas left in the tank, even with plenty of media streaming, camera use and all the rest of that shenanigans. And speaking of the camera, Sony has slapped on the same triple lens setup found on the Xperia 1. So that means you once again have a 12 megapixel primary shooter backed by a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens serving up a two times optical zoom. And thankfully the camera app is pretty streamlined and simple to use. You can swap between the three lenses with a quick tap of this little icon down here. A nice bit of ultra wide angle action, great stuff. And swapping between photo and video mode is just the case of a quick and simple swipe. Unfortunately that app isn't quite perfect though. I did notice it crash a good few times during my time with the Xperia 5. Sometimes we just have a complete wobbler and refuse to do anything at all, just throwing up lots of error messages until basically I had to shut down the app and occasionally even reboot the phone. So not really sure what's going on there, slightly annoying. Most of the time, of course, thankfully it does work fine. And on auto mode, you will end up with some pretty decent everyday snaps, even if the quality isn't quite as high as with some rivals like the Pixel 4 and Huawei's 2019 flagships. Basically, the Xperia 5 suffers from the same weaknesses as the Xperia 1, unsurprisingly. HDR situations prove tricky to handle, with occasional oversaturation and some serious murk in those darker areas. Indoor shots often appear quite soft and warm as well, if the lighting ain't too hot. Some of my test shots were definitely quite disappointing overall, especially when compared with the pics you get from other devices. Still, those alternative lenses certainly do their job, offering a flexible viewpoint when needed. You can grab some pretty dramatic pics with that wide angle shooter, and it's definitely helpful when dealing with enormous subjects as well. Although you will get the usual bit of distortion and colors are also a bit warmer when captured with this lens, but nothing too drastic. And while the two times zoom is inferior to the telephoto lens on phones from Huawei, Oppo, and so on, Sony's software smarts means that you do get quite impressively crisp results when using the digital zoom. Strangely, you don't have a dedicated night mode here on the Xperia 5 though, unlike pretty much every other handset out there now. And while low light pics do look fine, you definitely lose out on the overall balance. As for video, you can capture up to 4K resolution clips with HDR smarts, although once again the results aren't quite up to what you'd get from a Samsung or some of the other premium handsets. Image stabilization is fine, but contrast levels aren't always up to snuff. That said, I'm definitely still a big fan of that Cinema Pro mode as well, which adds a bunch of professional filters and gives you full manual controls over your video shooting as well. It takes definitely a bit of getting used to, but it's well worth the perseverance. In this latest incarnation, you can easily switch the focus between two specific static points, as well as adjusting the likes of the white balance as well. And with a bit of practice, you'll end up with some really engaging footage worthy of a proper DSLR. For an in-depth look at Cinema Pro and the rest of the Xperia 5's camera features, just go check out my Xperia 1 camera deep dive because it's essentially the same setup. So that is my review of the Xperia 5. And basically the question is, if you're after a compact phone that offers flagship level specs and features, is this Xperia worth considering? Well, I do really like the Sony Xperia 5. I enjoy using it as my everyday handset. The performance is great. The battery life is absolutely fine. And of course you get fantastic media chops on this thing as well. So it is great for your movie and music streaming. And I absolutely adore the compact design as well. And unfortunately that camera tech isn't quite there. If it was one of the better smartphone snappers out there, then the Xperia 5 would be quite easy to recommend even at that sky high asking price. As it is, you'll basically have to weigh up your priorities and decide whether the Xperia 5 is right for you. And so there you have it. That's my in-depth Sony Xperia 5 review three months after it launched that good old EFA 2019. Definitely very much interested in seeing what Sony Mobile spits out in 2020. Uh, but are you tempted by the Xperia 5 or maybe you've been using the Xperia 5? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And please do poke subscribe and do that notifications bell for more than the latest and greatest tech. Cheers everyone. Love you.